I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hi, I'm Luke Ryan for JoeBlow.com and welcome to Movie Endings Explained, where we'll be taking a look at some of the more ambiguous and discussed movie endings that have left audiences debating their true meaning long after the credits have rolled. This time we're going to be looking at the 2004 psychological thriller The Machinist, written by Scott Kosar and directed by Brad Anderson. The story follows a machinist named Trevor Resnick, played by Christian Bale, a man who lives a solitary life where he struggles with insomnia and as a result has become emaciated physically. Bale reportedly took on a diet of water, one apple and a cup of coffee a day, barely over 250 calories to lose 62 pounds for the role. His gaunt, skeletal-like appearance is truly a haunting visual and emblematic of the movie itself. You talk about The Machinist, you talk about how thin Christian Bale looks. One day, Trevor comes across a mysterious new co-worker who introduces himself as Ivan, and later on, Ivan distracts Trevor while he's working, causing an accident which costs a fellow machinist his arm. When he tries to explain to his bosses that he was distracted by Ivan, they don't know who he's talking about. What caused the mistake, Mr. Preston? I was distracted. By what? What distracted you? It was Ivan. I was watching Ivan in the pit. The whole thing was my fault, okay? Who did you say? The new Arkwell. I don't know his last name. What new Arkwell? Ivan, the guy from the swing shift. Reynolds was picked up on a warrant. This guy took his place. There is no Ivan at National Machine, Riz. The only solace that Trevor seems to take in life is in his regular meetings with Stevie, a prostitute who has taken a liking to him, and also in Maria, a waitress at an airport diner that he goes to every day. But as his obsession with finding out who Ivan is, and if he really does exist, begins to grow, it makes Trevor's life even more stressful and difficult. Later on while he's in work, Trevor hallucinates that his arm is being mangled by a machine, much like his co-worker who lost a limb, and gets into a fight with the other the machinist, believing them to have tried to set him up. Trevor is fired over the incident and becomes even more alienated and spirals into a deeper isolation. He forgets to pay his utility bill and loses electricity in his apartment while a dark, blood-like substance begins to leak from his fridge. The plot thickens, literally. He manages to find Ivan again and notes down the license plate from his car, but runs out of gas and can't pursue him any further. When the DMV refuses to give Trevor any information based on the plate number, Trevor decides to throw himself in front of a car to try and pin an actual crime on Ivan using the plate number. When he goes to the police though, he finds out who the car that Ivan drives actually belongs to. Are you sure about these plate numbers? Seven, four, three, yeah, all right, that's the one. You ever have a car stolen? No, why? Because the car that allegedly hit you was your own. 1969, red Pontiac Firebird, registered in your name. Nearly a year ago, you reported it as being totaled in a wreck. So, the car Trevor has seen Ivan driving around in is in fact Trevor's own car, which he had reported as totaled a year previously, but he doesn't seem to remember this. When he turns to Stevie for moral support, he finds a photograph in her apartment of Ivan and confronts her. She insists that she doesn't know what he's talking about. Next, he tries to turn to Maria, but discovers yet another revelation as he returns to the familiar airport diner. Where's Maria? Who? Who? Maria, my waitress. No, oh, you're chatty tonight. Darling, I'm your waitress. What's going on here? I've never seen you before. What are you talking about? I come in here every night sitting on that same stool staring at your coffee. To be honest, I'm starting to think you were a mute. I want to see Maria! Mister, there's no Maria that works here. 
Earlier in the film, Trevor went for a day out with Maria and her son Nicholas, who ended up having a seizure. As we reach the home stretch of the film, Trevor tracks Ivan back to his own apartment where he is seemingly leading Nicholas into. After a confrontation with Ivan, Trevor kills him, and opens his fridge to find rotting fish, the source of the blood. He rolls up Ivan's body in a carpet and begins to dispose of him in a scene that we actually opened the movie with. Here's the scene at the beginning of the film. And now, the scene as it plays out at the end. Well, looks like you got some explaining to do, partner. <laughs> After numerous hints and flashes of this moment throughout the film inside Trevor's mind and the things that are coming out through his memory, we then see a flashback to a year earlier, where Trevor was driving and accidentally hit a young boy on the road. The young boy being Nicholas. Trevor now remembers what happened, and fills in the hangman post-it note that has been hanging on his fridge, calling himself a killer. He drives to the police station to turn himself in for the hit and run, Ivan still silently with him. As we reach the very final scene of the film, the police take Trevor into custody, guides him to a cell where he finally falls asleep, and we see one last vision of a healthier yet emotionally stricken Trevor driving through a tunnel. So, on outside appearances, this is the story of a man who killed a young child accidentally and ran away from this truth for a year. In the process, he changed, both physically and mentally. Unable to sleep, he repressed this horrific memory and due to his gross sleep deprivation, he hallucinated a lot of the world around him. The waitress at the airport he envisioned as Maria, Nicholas's mother. He also imagined being with Nicholas during a traumatic event at the fairground. Then there's Ivan, who according to every other character who is confronted with his name, insists they've never heard of or seen. Ivan's license plate, CRN743, is the reverse of Trevor's, NRC347. Is this a hint, least of all that Ivan is driving Trevor's old car, that Ivan is somehow also Trevor? or at least a reflection of Trevor, that he is a hallucinated representation of Trevor's dark side, or even his guilt. When we first see Ivan, the shot is almost surreal, with a stormy sky framing his face. There is a sinister, otherworldly feel to Ivan at times, and Trevor's mind creating an imaginary, physical embodiment of everything that he hates about himself seems to sort of make sense. Or, on the other hand, Ivan could be a symbol of Trevor's conscience, who tries in some warped way to lead Trevor down the path to accepting what he did. There are many theories about the ending of The Machinist, one of which proposes that the bright, white cell that Trevor allows himself to be imprisoned in 
represents heaven, that he has accepted his sin and has now left hell. Yeah, there is an idea that the majority of the movie actually takes place in some kind of manifestation of hell. The muted tones, the painful existence that Trevor is forced to live through, never being able to sleep and constantly being haunted by the instant he has tried so hard to repress. In some interpretations, this also frames Ivan as some form of the devil, which I personally think is a bit too broad of an idea. Not to mention that this theory requires Trevor to be dead, which to me doesn't seem to ring very true to the overall story. Earlier in the film we see a lot of clues laid out when Trevor takes Nicholas on the Route 666 ride at the fairground. First we see a waitress, representing perhaps Maria, the comforting presence of a waitress fitting Trevor's image of this innocent mother who had lost her son. Secondly, we see an Indian holding a severed hand, representing the co-worker who lost his hand in the factory. Next, a woman in black, mourning over a grave, again perhaps Maria, grieving over Nicholas. After that, a hanged man with a sign reading guilty next to it, symbolizing Trevor as the guilty man responsible for this death, and how subconsciously Trevor knows he should pay for what he did. Then there's Shady Lady Motel standing in for Trevor's relationship with Stevie, a cutout of a young boy running in front of the car and getting hit, a crashed car with a body, and finally a fork in the road, left to the highway to hell right to the road to salvation. Trevor instructs Nicholas to turn right, but the car turns left anyway. Inside the tunnel, the strobing lights give Nicholas a seizure, and Trevor experiences brief flashbacks to the accident a year previously. In many ways, this whole sequence could be seen as Trevor's wild concoction inside his mind, trying to push himself to remember the truth. The highway to hell symbolism sure isn't subtle, but comes back around again at the end when Trevor remembers the truth and can either drive left to the airport to continue running away from the problem, or he can drive right and make the right choice and to turn himself in. The final shot of the film shows Trevor's anguish moments after the accident as can be seen by the smashed windscreen. And as he rides through the tunnel, the apparent highway to hell, the road to ignoring his crime, and before we fade to white, we see him steal his expression, his choice to repress and to forget. Was Trevor dead all along? Was he stuck in hell until he could accept and own up to his sins? Or was he just a regular guy who made one huge mistake, and in pushing it to the back of his mind and running away from it, ended up almost killing himself with repressed guilt, almost literally eating away at him, until he could finally lead himself to the road to salvation? I think the latter, but what do you think? Let us know in the comments section, and as always, thanks for watching.